Your eyesight can be impaired if you're too close to them. Your uh, The male testes can be impaired if you're close to them or working near them. Um, and so what happens is these relay antennas, uh, which are what these smart meters are doing, have the ha, can impact public health very dramatically. And we feel that they're not necessary. The analog meters uh, that are on people's homes work perfectly fine. And uh, the position of our government is that we are to be subjected to these whether we want them or not. And so uh, that's why I wrote the article about the smart meter rebellion, because many people across the United States, and especially in California and Maine, have really been uh, rebelling against having these smart meters. We've been locking up our meters, actually, so that they can install them on our homes. And we have been uh, taking action to prevent um, uh, the, these companies from putting them on the homes because we feel that the health effects from these will be enormous. Mm, so, okay, uh, so I can stop a smart meter going into my home, but I can't stop a smart meter going into my neighbour's home. And we will still be within the, um, you know, within in the area that this can reach. I mean, what can we really do about this? Is, is there any protection that we can, uh, you know, anything well, that we can do? Well, there are, there's a form of drywall or, uh, and I don't mean drywall from China, by the way, that's dangerous. <laughs> But there's a form of drywall, or um, it's a uh, like sheetrock, and what happens is that they put it around. Uh, they put it in rooms where you're going to have um, X-ray machines or different things. So you can install this special type of drywall, uh, which will protect certain areas from, um, in other words, from from exposure. So there are some things that people can do, and also uh, we can get them to not engage or turn them on so that they don't work. But if you're um, in a line of fire of these meters uh, through a windows or through unprotected walls and other areas, and you're pretty close to them, you will be in the line of fire to have some sort of health problems from, being, from that exposure over time. This is, you know, this is just as serious as the cell phone towers that are, are being erected uh, everywhere. I mean, I, I'm in personal contact with people that are electromagnetically sensitive to the point where they can tell you exactly where the frequencies, which antennas the frequencies are being transmitted from. Um, a huge issue here. So um, certainly something to take up. Is there somewhere that we can go? Uh, the Agricultural Defence Coalition dot org has. Uh, much on this. Is there somewhere that we can go to uh, uh, get more there's information? Some, there's some links on my site which will take you to other information um, about um, pg e smart meters. I've tried to put up all the information that I have on it, but some foreign countries are doing some studies which are worth taking a look at too as far as health effects because they're starting, the subject is starting to be studied more. But I think that the impact of the cell towers and the, and the cell phones, uh, the impact of the smart meters and the smart meter relay antennas are a real disaster and also can uh, disrupt. By the way, uh, one, of the, one of the species that eats a lot of mosquitoes and other bugs are bats, and uh, this Smart meters disrupt the communication and the ability of bats to function within their range. And so areas which are used to having their bug population reduced by bats could be impaired and have escalating um, populations of mosquitoes because the bats won't go into areas where these smart meters and these relay antennas are either. Right. So it, right. it can have um, other effects as well. Mm, the bats are really taking a hiding, aren't they? I mean, they, you know, coming up with funguses. It, it, it's extraordinary. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Wow. Hmm. Um, Rosalind, could you um, talk to the listeners today about how they could become involved in the fight against geoengineering? 
and such as past events they may be able to duplicate or initiate in their area as well as upcoming events that you are aware of. Um, U.S. Um, I got a toll-free number I can offer. Um, the U.S. citizens may call the Washington toll-free number of all of our elected officials in D.C. at one 220 um, Could you elaborate a little bit? Yes, that number is a toll-free number that will get you to anyone, any elected official, a U.S. Senator or U.S. House member in Washington, D.C. Uh, there's a switchboard there, and you can ask for whichever member of Congress you wish to speak to. In addition, we are asking people to move locally to start to elect uh, local people who are have a like mind about these issues into city government, county government, state government. We're starting to begin to fight back by putting um, ballot measures for people to vote on as, as initiatives in local communities. Uh, one of the things we did here in Mendocino County years ago is we banned GMOs, uh, genetically modified crops here. And uh, we have taken action on in other areas where we have stopped some um, chemical, toxic chemical spraying on roadways and other areas. So we really feel that electing people to office that hold similar views is really important and also ballot initiatives. And in different countries, I know it's different on how the process works, but we feel that working at the local level and then putting pressure uh, using terminology that doesn't get you linked into a hoax scenario or a conspiracy scenario works uh, and is working much better than if we rely on terminology that just takes the person into ignoring us because they feel that we're not credible. So um, I'm hoping that a lot of the things that we're doing looks like they're going to bear fruit here and some of these issues. And geoengineering, we have to pressure the U.S. government and especially Britain, who are uh, who is um, escalating these things into not going forward with them because of the problems with air pollution, water pollution, crop damage, tree damage, acid rain, and other things that these programs uh, that they plan and are initiating um, have are you know will affect all of us plus our crops. So there's a lot of things I think we can do. It's going to be a tough road. I mean, I'm not going to say it's easy, but I think we have to take the steps to protect ourselves. Agreed. 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 All right. Um, Rosalind, we're coming up to the top of the hour. You're listening to Revolution Radio. We are 100% listener supported. We'll be back with you in just a tick. <laughs> 